Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. Can I get a roll call? Mr. Barron? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. D'Andriano? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. William? Here. Can I get an audit of the bills? Yes. Just give me a minute to get my paper. <laughs> I will make a motion the town board approve abstract number 17 dated September 16th, 2016 in the amount of $149,075.85, so moved. Second. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Burns. All right, first item on my agenda is budget transfers. We only have one. Budget transfer 37 is for the Putnam Lake Park District Training. We're transferring $500 from Park Personnel Services to Park Training. So I'll make a motion to approve budget transfer request 37 as submitted. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, second item on my agenda, we've had a continuing uh, discussion on the board regarding the Putnam Lake Park District's request to purchase a uh, motor from the Putnam Lake Park, or from the Putnam, yeah, Putnam Lake Fire Department. Uh, at the last meeting, I had indicated that I would go out and we'd put the motor on the boat and I'd go take a little ride around Putt Lake. I was not able to do that, but I was able to look at the motor and look at the, um, uh, the boat and I took some photos that I've circulated to the board. Uh, the, the boat is a 14-foot sea, sea nymph. Uh, it is rated for a 25-horsepower uh, motor. Maximum capacity is 830 pounds, including the motor and gear, four persons or 590 pounds. Um, the motor I inspected at the Putnam Lake uh, Fire Department. It was, it actually, it was repaired at uh, Mayapac uh, Marine. It had a problem, with, I think, with the drive shaft, and that was repaired, and the, the propeller was replaced. Uh, it appears to be, I did not put the motor on, but it appears to be in, in very good condition if you look at it aesthetically. Uh, and the boat does seem to be rated for that. The reason I was not able to mount it, though, is the transom, uh, the plywood in the transom uh, where you would mount the motor is deteriorated. It needs to be uh, replaced, which I don't think is a significant job. So, I mean, I'm in favor at this point of recommending uh, uh, that, that the park district be allowed to purchase the motor. I think the only contingency we'd like to see is just that there would be some restriction on who the operators of that boat would be or that there would at least be one operator who's trained in the safety class uh, on board if other people uh, are using the boat as well. So, do you want to make discussion? a motion to approve that or approve it for discussion or? I, I have an ongoing concern about uh, the number of people who would be authorized to use the boat. And um, another concern is, and I was under this impression that the fire department could um, handle what the park district is looking to do with these docks. Um, kind of came up loosely at last meeting where um, the gentleman from uh, Putnam Lake Fire Department even said maybe it could be used as their uh, part of their training somehow or other. So I think that bears looking into. Um, I mean, I don't think one is mutually exclusive of the other. I agree with you that if the, if the Putnam Lake uh, Fire Department could help with putting the docks out, that would be great. I still don't th think that I would say that precludes the purchase. I could foresee th other things that they could use the boat for, uh, moving materials around, not skiing. <laughs> um, so I mean, I, I don't, I don't think subject to limiting who is actually going to be on the boat. My understanding was I think Mike or Cola, uh, Frank Ericole. Oh, Ericole. Um, Hank Earl, and there was a third person, is Pat in the, Pat's not here, there was a third person who I think was trained in the boater safety class, that those be the three people who would, one of those three people would always be on the boat or uh, running it if it was being used. I agree with you. I don't, I don't think, I don't see it as an issue as long as those parameters are met. 
And I think this is something that uh, we can subject to, if there's any problem, we can certainly revisit this. I don't, I don't think that uh, for the intent that they proposed, I don't see any problem with it. I think they've proven that they've been a responsible organization and I think right. we should treat them as such. I mean, we can talk to the fire department on Monday. They're coming in for budget. We could talk to them as to whether they'd be willing to do at least the dock portion of it, which might be a little mm -hmm. more dicey. Mm -hmm. But I still think there might be some application for having the vote um, for other purposes as well. I've never heard that the intent is for recreational purposes. It's for maintenance right. and, and work. And so. I'm not suggesting not a vote. So, Kevin, was that a motion? I'll make. I'll, so, Pete, did you want to weigh in or just make? Yeah, make no, okay. Well, do we have to do this tonight? I mean, if we're going to talk to the fire department, I'm well, I'm just saying the fire, I wouldn't preclude them from getting the motor that we might still want to have the fire department put the docks out because that may be a more substantial job. Uh, but I wouldn't say that that one is mutually exclusive of the other, but that's me, so. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. I'm opposed. Okay. So it's three one zero or three one one. Yes, three one one. It is. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Peter. Okay. First item on my agenda: uh, T-shirts for men's softball league. I make a motion to approve four hundred forty, not to exceed four hundred forty-eight dollars to select sportswear for men's t-shirts, uh, men's softball t-shirts, so Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Second item, item is another uh, request from the rec department for Nike Performance polo shirts for the director with the logo. Uh, I'd like to make a motion not to exceed $186 to select sportswear, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The third request from the rec department for hooded sweatshirts, the Patterson Rec, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve $556 to select sportswear, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item on my agenda is a uh, memo from Russ Goff. I'd like to request to hire Carl Short, Jr. as a part-time laborer for the sanitation at the rate of $26.98. Kevin Proctor, our previous part-time employee, had gotten a full-time position and his last day was last week. Paul Short Jr. is a college student and is currently only available on Wednesdays. Currently have no other part-time employees available. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, to hire Carl Short Jr. as a part-time laborer at the rate of twenty-six ninety-eight, uh, pending all background checks and, and so on. So moved. A second, but a question for Russ. Russ, the way that memo reads it says he's a college student he's only available on wednesday so is he the right person to be your part-time would he fill the role if you need somebody the only person he's all you got oh okay all right okay i, didn't, I seconded, seconded it. okay all in favor aye. aye any opposed i'd like to add uh two items to my agenda one is the uh, 311 railroad bridge uh, wall mta wall and the other is uh, Club Court Park. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so first I'd like to talk about, as you know, I've mentioned several times, I've been kind of working, we've been working the last few years on the, the, wall, the rock wall that's deteriorating by the 311 Railroad Bridge, the MTA Railroad Bridge. I finally met up with uh, Glenn Hayden, who is the Vice President of Engineering, and I met him out there. We, uh, we went back and forth. They kind of thought I was talking about the actual wall that held up the bridge, and we were really talking about the rock wall that's fallen apart before, the, before and after the bridge. Um, you know, we've been trying to find out who owns it, who's responsible for it. So I finally got a chance to uh, meet the vice president of engineering. And we went out there, we met, looked at it. They only own eight feet from the actual that, the, um, the wall that holds up the bridge the pier uh, they only own about eight feet each way so if you're coming from kent coming towards town hall um, the eight feet on the right hand side is really what the problem is on the other side it's it's really intact the wall's intact so 
he said that in good faith as a good neighbor they would fix that or do something for that eight feet of, of wall the only problem is there's more of the wall coming the other way um, I'm not sure who owns that or who would be responsible that would be the DOT the DOT. It's in the DOT right of way so what he said what they would do what he he proposed that they would do there's actually a cattle path behind the wall there's actually so he said they would be able to do it what they would probably do is uh, knock the wall down and push it push it back so it doesn't continue to deteriorate and fall into the roadway I actually saw one day I found a, uh, I took a piece of rock out of a uh, roadway that fell off the wall so I don't know if you want to that eight feet on both sides yeah so how do they push it back without compromising the structural integrity of the bridge? It well, the the rock wall, the um, you know, it's it, it's not part of the support structure. Support structure at all. Hmm. But you're talking about as you're driving up to that, you're saying from the railroad bridge they only own eight foot feet towards you. Yeah, they only own eight feet on each side of of the pier the that holds huh. up the, the bridge. It'll be interesting to see what DOT says about that. Well, that's the thing too, and also it, you know they have to go through an engineering project and and, uh, and plans and all that stuff. So I told them, you know, don't do anything until we discuss it. If we were even to decide to do it, and I think if we decided to do it, it would have to be in conjunction with DOT to do something else, or else it'd just be one section that's fixed, and <laughs> it'd probably make it worse for the rest of it. So um, who would we contact from DOT? How would we go forward with that? That would be um, Rock De Negro. That would be where you would start. We certainly can reach out to him, set up a meeting, coordinate you meeting with him. Okay. Okay, so we could do that. Um, so my second item I wanted to add was uh, Club Court Park. I've actually uh, been meeting with uh, Rich. Rich has, um, has been on this. I had some complaints about Club Court Park. That's that little park with the swings and stuff in, in Putnam Lake. There were some people that were complaining about the the, um, the, the swings I actually sent some pictures. I don't know if you guys have pictures in the packet. Did you give the pictures? I don't remember seeing the pictures. No. no. I thought I sent an email to ask them to be printed. It out. was for your uh, the first item. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I went actually went out there myself because I saw you know I got a lot of complaints and went out there myself. Um, the toddler swings, the safety uh, belt on the toddler swings, one of the latch hooks is actually missing, so it can't even latch. The other latch hook is broken, so it can't even latch. Uh, I talked to some mothers that were there, and they said that they've been like that for a year or so. Um, they were pretty happy with the overall of the park, but they had some concerns like that. And the wood chips around the swings and the play area have just kind of gone away, and there's weeds growing up through the wood chips, so yeah. it looks like we need to fish those wood chips. It's unfortunate that it's in this condition. We actually pay one individual to go out and look at the park and maintain it. And the first we heard about this was recently when somebody, uh, a resident, started complaining. So I can tell you, um, Paul Favor with our building and maintenance department picked up new swings today. They're going to be hung very shortly. Um, We've talked to Vinnie Murphy about um, uh, cleaning the weeds out of the mulch, and then we're going to have a conversation in the spring about replacing some of the mulch or refreshing it at least. Um, and there were two or three pieces of playground equipment that um, need some additional repairs, but Paul and I agreed that it probably would make more sense to wait till the spring before we effectuated any repairs on those. And there, there's going to be a they're proprietary equipment, so they're going to be kind of costly. Yeah. There's this one, uh, there's like a, a chain link ladder mm -hmm. that goes up the side, and one of the links is off. It looks like someone tried to repair it, and there's a piece of metal that's just kind of hanging out. It looks kind of dangerous. So I think we talked about maybe at least just cutting that piece off or something like that. Um, also, the bathroom, the ladies were talking, about, telling me about the porta potty, and I just figured it was just, you know, regular porta potty disgusting this when I opened the door and there was just toilet paper and disgusting this all over the all over the uh, porta potty so I don't know who maintains that or it's done by the contractor so we probably need to give them a call and, but uh, you know the garbage is are empty and the, the lawn looked good but um, just those other issues I don't know so I don't know if we have to look at how we maintain that how we look at it a little more closely Okay. 
All right, so we are working on getting that spruced up a little bit, more than a little bit. I just also want to reiterate, I think at the last meeting, I you know, mentioned we do get, you know, we have a, I kind of monitor this Facebook page and we get a lot of these good complaints on, on the page. And that's where we got a lot of this stuff from, but you know, people tend to gripe and groan on the page, you know, let, call us, call town hall, yeah. well, you know, let us know. We'll try to be as responsive as we can. You know, thank you. Mr. Cook. Next up, we have a request from the Putnam County Land Trust. Uh, I'll just read a couple of lines here. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Putnam County Land Trust, we are asking the town board to kindly consider waiving all fees, including but not limited to new signs, existing signs, some of which may be grandfathered and most importantly fees for non-conforming signs. Uh, bingo. Um, these signs are important to uh, provide awareness to both residents and visitors of our organization's mission, preservation and conservation, as well as a reminder that the majority of the preserves in the town of Patterson are accessible to the public for passive recreation. So um, I asked Rich and he very nicely did a little calculation on what it would cost um, to waive fees and uh, what I have here and I'll put this in a form of a motion that I'll make a motion to the town board approve waiving the fees as it relates to the Putnam County Land Trust uh, letter of September 15, 2016 um, in the amount of $775 plus any associated postage that would be required um, when they have to go out and advise people of the signage going up in an immediate area. Well, no, the, the no. postage is for variance application. I'm sorry, for variance applications. Uh, thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we have uh, a note from uh, our court uh, administration that they are putting in a uh, grant application um, in the amount of, to New York State, in the amount of $19,089.74. And for a variety of office equipment over there, video surveillance, shredder, chairs, probe, file cabinets. So what's needed is that, uh, what's needed is that one justice uh, must sign the signature page, which we have, a board resolution authorizing uh, court's uh, application and attach a copy of the court's itemized budget for the most recent municipal fiscal year. So, we have a resolution in front of us, which I will make a motion that the town board um, approve as read, and basically it uh, resolves that the town supervisors hereby authorized and directed to execute any and all agreements and other documents necessary to give effect to this resolution consistent with the terms and all at all inform satisfactory to the supervisor and town attorney. So I'll make a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, discussion Aye. real quick before we vote. I just wanted to make sure I understand the uh, grant proposal. The amount requested grant will cover the complete purchase of all the items in the grant, correct? It's not a matching funds grant. No, it's not a matching funds. And if we don't get the grant, we're not obligated to buy the items, correct? Correct. Correct. In favor. Aye. Thank you. Because I know there have been some grants that we, uh, by yes. applying for them, we're kind of locked into. Just wanted to Most sure. grants. The Justice Court grant program is not one of those. Right. Thank you for the time on that. Who did you say? We approve it? Yes. Did we all vote? I thought, well, well we, we started to interrupted, okay. so I apologize. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye
Sean said I and threw me all off. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Charles, do you have anything else? I'm good. Okay. So we have a, a request that was sent into our building department with a, um, a letter from Bob McCarthy. In essence, we had a building permit that was issued back in 2011 to a Mrs. Brown for a replacement of a boiler. Um, work did not commence because the oil burner company went out of business. So she put a letter into the town saying um, void out the permit. And uh, we told, uh, I guess the building department told her, okay, when you get a new contractor, apply for a new permit. Unfortunately, that did not occur and the new boiler was put in. So they're, they're playing a bit of catch up on this uh, with getting the building permit and the CFO for the new work that was done uh, recently. And the owner, Mrs. Brown, is asking for a transfer of fees from the old permits and the CFO fees to the new. Um, because the new permit was not obtained by the new burner company, uh, the code enforcement, uh, director of code enforcement recommends just transferring uh, the $50, which was the C of O fee, uh, to the new set of fees. So the total fee paid was three and a quarter. The cost of the new permit today would be two fifty plus the fifty dollars C of O. So, but he's only recommending a transfer of the fifty dollars fee, as I understand it. That is correct. And uh, and I agree with that, since the new uh, application, even though all parties were aware, was not not filed for. Uh, so I'll move uh, upon recommendation of Bob McCarthy, the director of code enforcement, that the I almost said planning board. <laughs> the town board. Um, Deja vu. <laughs> the town board approve a transfer of a fifty dollar credit, if you will, a fifty dollar fee previously paid to um, Joan Brown of Thirty One Pan Road in relation to her permit for the uh, boiler. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. While we are here, just very briefly, um, I want to bring to all your attentions that. Um, the building permit was taken out in 2011 and 2014. The property owner um, said she was not moving forward with the furnace and uh, asked to terminate the permit. Right. The, uh, the requirement within our code is that there's a renewal fee every year of $100. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what was provided, she paid one renewal fee in 2013. Nothing in 12, nothing in 14. Um, so I had a conversation with our building department about the fact that, you know, are we actually tracking building permits that are out there to make sure the renewals are made in a timely fashion? Um, they are just recently starting to do that, and they were doing it, building a separate database. We had just bought them software. Um, yeah. So. Upon further discussion, it was found there's no problem with the software doing it. We uh, figured out how to do it, um, but um, we had the conversation about they need to redo their training on the software so that they understand how to do it. They're going to be pursuing that. You would hope that those uh, would be a tickler file that would automatically just pop up as a reminder every month. These are the it's, existing it's, building permits that haven't been closed out that need. Yeah. It's not a tickler file, but it's a matter of pushing a button that'll print out a report. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, so it looks like they're going to be so, focusing on that. Yeah, we refocused that. So I guess the uh, public message is if you have an existing building permit and haven't renewed it, it might be a good time to come in before uh, getting a letter in the mail. So thank you. That's it. Okay, it is once again time to put out for bid uh, the preventive maintenance and repairs of our generators. The town currently owns 16 uh, emergency backup generators that we do preventative maintenance on twice a year. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we authorize the town clerk to advertise for bids for the um, preventative maintenance of our standby generators. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Later I'll ask you for a list of the 16. It's got them. <laughs> They're in the, yeah. Got to be in the bid packet. <laughs> Anything Good else? That's it. Just trying to keep mine as you know, I just knew somebody was going to ask something. I had to have that. Um, next on the agenda is the fire department contracts. Uh, we're obligated to provide the fire department contracts that we have to have a public hearing on sometime in October, November. Um, I've started working on drafts. I've provided a draft, I believe, to Mr. Yeah. Ligori to take a look at. 
and just wanted to put it in front of everybody to make sure that you're aware that we're doing this. And if you have any changes, if you could send them in to either myself or Mike. Do you, do you see anything major? I was not making any major changes to the contracts. However, that may be tempered by some of the um, initiatives that we are currently working on. Okay. Which I hope we can divulge at some point. Yeah. Soon. Very soon. <coughs> uh, I, I only ask because Mike, you, me, put a lot of work into it over the last couple of years and uh, made some significant revisions. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the last thing I have on my agenda was a request by um, a property owner through his attorney to take a look at a situation we have out in the Robin Hill Corporate Park, John Barrett Road, where there is a retention pond that is on private property which accepts, accepts the drainage from the road out there, which is now a town road. Um, there's a long history to this. I don't see the attorney. Is anybody here for this? I, I don't see the attorney here. Um, and there are other issues out there which I think has prompted this. There are currently violations on the property that we, we are working to address. Um, you know, the, the history is this is a subdivision that was done in 1977. The property specific to this issue was developed um, somewhere in the beginning, 1980s, um, right from the very beginning. Actually, it was probably developed in 77. Right from the very beginning, though, there was a retention pond showing the town, the road drainage going into it. There was a note placed on every one of the plats that said this road will never be offered for That's dedication. Cool. Yeah. Every one of, of five subdivision plats that I've seen. And yet in 1985, the town board, after a year-long attempt, finally did a resolution to accept the road into the town road system, and the town began, began uh, started ma maintaining the road, and but didn't file all the paperwork properly. So in 1993, uh, the town actually filed the paperwork. Recording a deed. Re recording a deed um, and taking the road into the road town road system. But this retention pond is outside the road right away. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd well, like you to take a look at this. Incorrect. He's saying that uh, he's requesting the town take uh, dedication of the road, right? Yes, you're right. In the letter, he references requesting the town take title to the road. Correct. Oh. Um, no. <laughs> hey, listen, we've been maintaining it, so we own it regardless. But um, again, there was a resolution. There was a resolution in February of 1985. I think it was February. It was rescinded in March. It was redone in November of 1985 accepting actually at that point the resolution was for 900 feet of the road um, and then uh, 1993 I believe town board did a formal resolution accepting the road yeah. so we own the road okay but the detention pond that we're talking about is outside the road so you know I'd like to ask our town attorney to take a look at this sure at the speed and, um, maybe we can reach out to Mr. Caruso, separately. Okay. Okay. And that is it for my agenda. Do you want to do Matt's? No. Accolades? I'd like you to do that because you are so eloquent. <laughs> oh, now you put me on the spot. But under other business, I will uh, be very happy to announce that our very own Matt Chabarro, Director of the Recreation Department, is being honored by the uh, Careers for People with Disability. And I'd like to just read a very small section of the letter, but they're pleased to tell him that he was selected to receive the Careers 2016 Outstanding Program Support Award. Matt explained to the town board earlier this evening that he has been very involved with this organization. Um, he is very humble in saying, I'm not quite sure what I did to deserve this, but I think he's been a very good friend to the organization Careers for People with Disabilities. Just by simply spending time uh, with 
the uh, people that come to the facilities to the rec department. He has a program that is inclusive uh, of them. And uh, I think he has spent a considerable amount of time just being a friend and being supportive. And I think that that deserves accolades and it's nice to see that he's getting that well-deserved honor. And that will be at their annual meeting on Thursday, October 20th at the Crown Plaza Hotel in White Plains. So uh, kudos to Matt Chibaro and uh, we know he's great, but it's nice to hear that other people know he's great as well. Yeah, it's well-deserved. So, yep. Well-deserved. Absolutely. We should have had him stay. We should have made him stay. I just have, uh, embarrassed him a little, but nah. Okay. Um, I do have one thing under other business, and that's just to let everybody know that the town board has received the tentative budget, and they've been holding a series of meetings with department heads and um, agencies that we fund, uh, trying to. Uh, a better understanding of what the needs might be and making adjustments to the uh, tentative budget which will now become the preliminary budget um, we had a meeting downstairs early today we met on Monday with the uh, Patterson Fire Department and some others and we have another meeting scheduled for this Monday 530 great okay anybody else Any I have other business one I did uh, one point a uh, it's a little early, and we'll mention it again, but the uh, the military show, military show, will be at the Recreation Center on a Saturday, October 22nd. Okay. Um, and seeing some people in the audience, I just want to say that um, I have not heard back yet from the Rural Water Association. I don't know what the issue is. I know there were some health issues there that they were wrestling with. Um, I intended the next meeting to put it on the agenda to advertise to um, build the, the uh, committee that they're looking for to start looking at water resources within, uh, within the town. But I, I, I know there were some health issues going on and I haven't heard back yet. Okay. So, do you have any other questions? I do have a Let's go to public recognition. Okay. Um, you and I had spoken, I think the last time was in, I think it was a August. A little closer? Oh, sorry. We won't bite you. In August. Um, and at that time, you had said you were going to contact the health department to talk to them about some further water testing because we're actually having a worsening of the situation as far as the water quality. Yeah, I absolutely um, apologize. Odor. I did send an email over, I think, well, I won't say to who, but um, the person who was there is yeah, you had said that. no longer there. Right. So, and I'm not sure what the status of that transition is right now, but I did send an email over to who I thought it might be, and uh, I will follow up tomorrow. I, I apologize, I did, it, it did drop off the radar, and I apologize for that. I had um, been communicating back and forth a little bit too with Lori Noel at Senator Murphy's office, and I haven't heard back from them as well. Um, as well, but they were supposed to be contacting someone in the DEC because there were there were some there was some other information that they had received about the water. I don't know if they came out of a contact that they had gotten from Mr. Winkley before you know he had to kind of because of the health issues, kind of step back from the situation. I have not heard from them either to see if anybody has taken over, um, but it's getting worse. Um, okay, I will uh, I'll reach out to Senator Murphy's office tomorrow as well and see what's going on with that. And I know in our conversation I had offered to you, you know, when we talk about that form, you know, forming a committee, Mr. Winkley had, you know, spoken about getting some residents involved and he said you know he had that expectation of me and i just wanted to put forward again i'm here oh i'm willing to do it you're top of the list all righty <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay right. anyone else from the public have any comments they wish to make george uh george is and i'm here uh as a resident and uh, representative of the library. A couple of weekends ago on the 17th and the 18th, uh, the town of Patterson really did themselves very proud. The uh, 
Blues and Barbecue Festival, uh, the Recreation Department had a wonderful uh, activity and amusements going on, and our, our very own library had our annual uh, week-long, kicked off the week-long book sale. And it was just so nice that all three were able to coordinate their activities. And I know I think that's a plan for next year as well. Maybe it'll be an annual thing. It was just really nice to see all the activity that was going on in the general area and people walking around. I know my kids and grandkids came, I went, and, and it was just nice to go from one place to the other. And somebody put it together and somebody coordinated and somebody made it happen. So that, but the town of Patterson should be very, very pleased. And it was a really, really nice community weekend. Yeah, actually it just kind of happened on its own. There was no coordination. Um, well, I, I know the, the, the library. We I had talked to people who were very concerned about there being other events going on. Well, I know that Matt had talked to the uh, Rotary Club because I guess a couple years ago there was mm -hmm. a conflict. Yeah. So I know Matt was working with uh, the Rotary Club and the library. I think there was some coordination between the. Well, I uh, have yeah. to differ. I had the same conversation with Matt. <laughs> So but that told. being said, it was a great day. It was a great weekend. And um, yes, I'm hoping that we can do that yeah. next year where we actually do A lot of activity in the village. Yeah. It was very, very nice. You're right. Thank you, George. Martin Miller Patterson. Uh, this morning, the medical drop box was officially unveiled uh, downstairs. It's where people can return to use medications. Uh, Supervisor Williams, Councilman Cook was there. There were dignitaries there from the Sheriff's Department, uh, the county, and the CTC Coalition. As a founding member of the CTC Coalition for the Carmel School District Communities of Care, I, was ver I am very pleased that we have this here. Also, I'm very pleased that my Rotary Club, the Patterson Rotary Club, funded this box. It's a tremendous example of community groups and local government working together for the betterment of the community. I want to thank you. Thank you. And, and Rotary. Yes, we want to, we, again, we've expressed this before, but we also want to thank the Rotary. Um, I am very surprised at how much use is getting. We've, it's only been there a couple of weeks. It's already been filled and, and uh, all the medicine has been taken away. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs>